So decades ago at this point, it meant a very different thing being a true biker grounded in the performance Harley-Davidson world. Even in the days of present, where performance Harley-Davidson culture has become more accessible than ever, there are those that still carry the torch of what it meant to be a biker in the days of way back. This was of course the raw grit and hard work that is needed to build and maintain one's own motorcycle, as well as bringing a degree of rowdiness into all things. Whether it's the fast miles on the road, or it's that knockout drag out fight in the back of some bar. In a world that has moved on, there are those who continue to put in the work, who continue to fight, who continue to innovate, and above all, who continue to stay true. And this, my friends, brings us to none other than Trev, the bulletproof welder. Between the handmade parts that he designed personally, to bringing these murals into his paint, all the way down to the ancient alchemy of turning an exhaust into pure gold, within the custom performance dynasty for years at this point, Trev has truly made a unique lane for himself. We hear this phrase thrown around a lot within our world, which is built, not bought celebrating the idea that one's bike cannot be easily replicated or found in any showroom. Trev takes this to a completely different level and at one glance at literally any section of his bike is more than enough to prove this point. So I became acquainted with Trev years ago at this point as both of our Dyna Lowrider S's had a very similar start. That's right, heat wrap thunderheader and all. Trev was someone I would constantly bounce ideas off of for my own build, most notably the 124 SNS crate I eventually chose as well as my aggressive Lindle brake setup are direct results of the numerous conversations I've had with him throughout the years. For two builds that would start off nearly the same almost a decade ago would then diverge into two completely different beasts both highlighting and celebrating our different coasts. These bikes would then be reunited in the form of a printed magazine. Having my bike in this magazine was already an honor enough, but having it stand beside the gold standard of Dinas was an accolade on a different level. The drama between our two respective coasts has existed since the dawn of time, from music all the way down to our world of performance Harley-Davidson. This drama is something I've always looked past, and I'll be the first to tell you that there were innumerable West Coast builds that inspired a lot of the direction I took my own custom path, while still holding on to that New York flair. It was clear early on that Trev shared this mindset of unity between our opposite coasts. Taking the time to come to my city back in 2021 to make an appearance at our most renowned event, the Indian Larry Block Party. But now, I found myself in his city, on his coast. The palm trees were swaying and shimmering under the relentless heat of a Bakersfield afternoon. Over 5,000 miles into a bike trip, I now found myself in Trev's hometown, who had graciously made the time to get some miles in and show me around town, even though it was well past 100 degrees outside. We talked of all things from top secret upcoming plans for our new builds to the disciplined and sober lifestyle that we had both stepped into around the same time, as well as the similarities of coming from cities experiencing a mass exodus in response to major problems and why, at the end of the day, we choose to stay. The thing about Trev that you'll immediately pick up upon meeting him is that he is every bit the blue collar, rowdy, hard as nails dude that you would think he is. Essentially a true modern personification of a Merle Haggard record. The side that maybe does not come across though, especially with the fact that he's riding undoubtedly one of the best performance dinas in the game, is just how down to earth and genuinely humble this man is. The type of dude who will be down to ride with anyone regardless of how cool their bike is. The type of dude who rather than gatekeeping information is very open in regards to the parts and process of his own build. Maybe a moment that epitomized all of this is when one of the many homeless people that we would encounter throughout the day interrupted his interview. 
Rather than becoming frustrated or ignoring this lady, he took a moment to not only acknowledge her, but to also give her one of his last cigarettes. This was clearly a dude who had seen and understood true hard times, allowing him to see this person in front of him in this moment as a human. This one moment stood to be one of the most notable acts of kindness I had witnessed throughout my entire coast to coast trip. So yeah, I could talk about this dude and his bike for hours. That being said, at this point, it's time to turn it over to him. So without further ado, with true honor, I bring you Trev, the Bulletproof Welder. Uh, Trevor, Bakersfield, California, uh, known as uh, Bulletproof Welder. You know, uh, I've always wanted one when I was younger, growing up. I just didn't trust myself. And then throughout the years, you know, buddies and stuff had got them. And then uh, a friend of mine, Kenny, he picked one up, another welder. And the goal was to be unknown. <laughs> you know, we were... Uh, he was a stunt rider, and that's what mainly got me motivated into this thing. So I went down, I picked up this Dyna, and then uh, unfortunately Kenny passed. So I did what came natural to me, which is building and customizing. Um, I was always been into racing, so naturally I, you know, started messing with the engine, and then being a welder and a fabricator, I started making parts, and then uh, I really started enjoying that. And then you know, as I got better a lot of people started kind of watching and I mean it took off from there and the, the rest is uh, what you see right here so this is probably the last time you guys will see it this way I'm gonna do another rebuild just try to level up again you know it's always got to raise the bar and that's what I'm about so it's time for a change up uh, the bike life for me man it's just been like it's been insane you know this and I hate to say it this way, but it, it truly, I've been thinking about this and you know, that, that bike has almost taken my life, but it's also saved it, if that makes sense. I'm sure some other people can, can relate with that, but you know, without this motorcycle, I wouldn't be in the headspace I am today. You know, I've, I've dealt with some issues in my life and I've been able to um, focus and, and really get my mind right when I, when I build things. And you know, like they say, idle hands are uh, the devil's playground. So, so here it is, you know, I just keep trying to keep up myself and do better and and throughout that I've done that to myself as well so if it's not writing or fabricating or, or trying to try to come up with something new and constantly challenge myself you know where's the where's the joy in life you know what what else can you do go to a nine to five and just go to a dead-end job you know like to me I constantly need to be challenged and I constantly got to step my game up that goes for riding motorcycles work you know fitness now it's uh it's a beautiful thing, man. And without these motorcycles, I don't know if I would be, I'd be at that level that I am today. Uh, let's see. So the theme of the bike obviously is nautical, as you can see. Um, I was a commercial fisherman for a long time. I'm a scuba diver, commercial uh, lobster diver. I've been diving for about 15 years. It's just one of my passions that I love. So I wanted to incorporate those things into the into the motorcycle. So. A few of the things, you know, this, this bike kind of represents me. A lot of people that know me know the story. As you can see, I've got Merle Haggard painted on the front. We're here in Bakersfield. Uh, he's a legend here. This is the town I grew up in, so I had to incorporate Merle Haggard in there somehow. And then if you carry on through the bike, there's, you know, pirate girls and ships, so on and so forth. I made a lot of this stuff out of brass. Um, a lot of people ask, like, is that gold plating? It's not. It's titanium nitrate. So I found a company that did um, aerospace parts and whatnot. And the, three, the heat threshold is up to 1,900 degrees with this. So that's how you can see the, the pipe here. But obviously, the bike runs hot, and you can see a little bit of discoloring. So all the other stuff I, I handmade out of brass. You can see this here. I kind of renamed the bike just as a joke, Poseidon's Kiss. If you don't know what that is, you need to Google it. <laughs> and the uh, crash bars, those were made out of solid inch and a quarter round stock, machine those down. Try to make them look like cannon, fluted the barrels. Um, the boat cleats here, tie downs. Anybody that's in the uh, nautical industry knows what those are for. Yeah, it comes in handy. You need to tie something down, you just, there's your tie down. Then you come over to the you know, I just try to incorporate little stuff like that. The scuba helmet, Mark V helmet over here for the dipstick as well. Yeah, so we just took them, took the uh, regular oil caps and, or the dipstick and then put it into the, 
into the Mark V helmet. And then also if you incorporate, you know, I kind of, it's kind of a, it's nautical, it's pirate, right? So you gotta have some, some treasure on the bike, right? So when we went to Italy, we had a great time. I judged the show out there and uh, came back with a pocket full of change. And I was like, man, where am I gonna, what am I gonna do with this, you know? So I started hiding little pieces of change from Italy throughout the bike, because obviously I'm Italian, so I had to put some kind of my heritage on there. And if you keep going, I mean, there's a, there's a million little hidden things in here. Some of them I even forgot about. <laughs> but now if you, uh, if you go here, you know, you've got the coins like you keep on you. No quarter, no mercy. That's for when I race people and screw around in the streets. And then if you go to the, the one here, why don't you read that one? Seize me flesh, but not my soul, right? Because this bike almost killed me when I crashed. Took a lot of my flesh. <laughs> and then you come over to this one, it's hidden. And every time I sit down, I take the helm. So you keep going throughout that. We, I took quarter inch plate here, made the dash cover, got the engraver out, the Dremel, did some little stuff here and there on it. Um, took some of the Harley stuff, the original fuel gauge machined it, got it to polish up. You know, it was that weird Harley brass color. So we just took that machined up, took top layer off and polished the piss out of it. Uh, SPB pipe, obviously had to go with the gold. It's about the fourth one I've done. And then the engine, uh, this is my, uh, this is my third engine. Had the old 110 and then went to 117, grenaded that in Sturgis. This one is a high compression 110 built by Monty over there at, um, now he's with Jim's. But, you know, head work, tuned. I don't wanna tell you everything's got in there, but she's pretty quick. <laughs> Other than that, you know, I just take little stuff and try to change it up, put the clasp this way. You know, some people run the springs, I had to run the clasp. Swing arm brocks. Uh, Took that, cut it out of stainless, polished it up, titanium nitrate of that. It says hold fast on this side. You come to this side, it says stay true. So it's kind of like my motto, right? Hold fast, stay true. It's kind of a something you gotta live by. So in the nautical world, you hold fast and stay true is just what you do to your to you for you. There's some more coins. Made the oil cooler. Bought that off of Amazon, added the fan on there. Uh, so you can get these pretty easily off of Amazon. And then the housing. And then you get these little fans. I think they're like five bucks. They're waterproof. And then I just wired it onto clip instead of a switch. And then I had the LP5 for a while. And I wanted to use the backdrop because I was blinding everybody. So I put that on a switch. But now with the LP4, I can only go one way or the other. But yeah, so if I, if I, don't want to blind people I can I wired it up to this one so now the backlight drops here and then that one's on because obviously these things are bright as hell <sighs> got Brembo's all the way around it dual disc Lindel only the best as you use as well those are the Brembo M4's oh that's the IMS Elite crash bar yeah same with the bars um, Jim was a very good buddy of mine uh, so when I rebuilt, I had to do something in his memory. So I added some uh, his dive bars here, the crash bars. Oh, the seat, that's a LaPera um, kickflip. So I took that and, you know, obviously I like to fidget with stuff. So I came across some filigree leather that would match the filigree on the tank. So took that, cut it all up, made it in my buddy's garage. Um, honestly, it was just, let's try something to see if it works. And man, it came out awesome. Tail lights are just some Amazon specials. They're super bright. I had to mount them from here to here, but then I also have the bags, which you're not gonna see today, but the bags all mount here. I've got those all airbrushed. You'll see them on the next version of the bike. Lindel in the back. And then I also have the GP suspension. Um, the gold now, that's all coatings tech. What else? Steven Finish FX. 
he's done all the graphics on here. He's done the pinstriping. He helped me get all this stuff scored away and blocked off. You know, a lot of this was airbrushing and we had to even it all out and make it, make it clean. He's out here in Kern County. 90% of this bike was all Kern County people. So I try to keep it all Bakersfield folks that, that did that other than gym stuff. Um, Stay Rowdy, obviously, Corey's company. It's a good buddy of mine. He made this. I golded it for him. That's one of my favorite pieces on the bike. You know, America, Stay Rowdy. Um, just a good dude, good company. I don't know. People dig this side of the bike, too, like when they come out. <laughs> so, Barnett extra plate clutch, uh, AIM pressure plate. Uh, this thing has stayed tried and true through all three engines. Uh, blown two transmissions as well. Uh, I'm about to do on another clutch. Uh, Pro One Performance pegs. Uh, they did. They gave me these with the titanium nitrate as well. I love these things. And you don't see a gold kickstand every day. So, me and old Blockhead are constantly messing with each other on this one. So, there's your gold kickstand, Blockhead. <laughs> Other than that, let's see what else is there. The high flow filter, dark horse uh, compensator. But yeah, I wish I had the Plex audio, but you know, in the, the last crash or the last messed up thing, I, I just had to fix the fairing. Some of you guys know that story. But the Plex audio was completely just taken off. The gauges were completely ripped off. That's why I wish I'd collect my odometer on. I've got about 80,000 on this thing. Um, she gets ridden, but you know, She's pretty too. Like I said, me and Kenny, the, the plan was to be like an unknown, like a stunt rider type guy. So Kenny was a stunt rider. He knew how to do all the wheelies. Back then, nobody was, I mean, people were doing it, but it wasn't like you can go down to a stunt lot you can today and just go down and start trying to learn how to do wheelies. So you had to know somebody and they had to teach you because you can't just pop these things up. I didn't grow up riding dirt bikes or Harleys. You know, this was all new to me. So the goal was to do that. And then Kenny passed away and, um, you know, I had to go a different direction, so unfortunately, but it turned out to be okay. You know, I still miss Kenny every day. He's, you know, one of my best friends, but, um, you know, first version of the bike, I, I did some just mistakes like everybody else. You know, you don't, you, you, you learn from everything you do, right? And if not, you're not going to get any better. So the first version of the bike, it wasn't great. You know, it was, it was hideous. You know, I had a gold seat and I had a, a bad fairing and then, as I progressed, my uh, airbrusher progressed and the designs got better. Um, and then I went out and I started winning shows in Vegas and, and then I figured out how to do the gold pipe and, and then that transitioned to Laguna Seca. And then on the way home from Laguna Seca, man, I, I went down going about 110, 120 or whatever it was. And uh, I had to rebuild. So I broke my back, my wrist, my hand, my ankle, my ribs, um, I was bad. I was in bad shape. I had sepsis, uh, all the road rash got infected. I was out for the count for a minute and uh, I just had to rebuild. So as I'm sitting in the room and trying to heal up, I'm just, I've got these designs going through my head of what I'm gonna do, how I'm gonna do it. And uh, I got into that Rolling Sounds biker build off and that's where it progressed into what this is today. You know, Jeff Holt, He's been watching this thing from day one. Like he was the very first show I've ever entered, man. And he said, come back next year, come back next year. And then progressively I got better and I started winning the shows and I just can't let things be. So he, he said something really good at Laguna Seca, which was this bike really has lived five lives. Like, you know, three engines, two transmissions. Uh, there, there isn't a stock part on this bike other than the switches. I was thinking about that today. You know, the, the buttons are worn off because <laughs> there's so many miles on it, but it's been down to the frame and back up a couple times um, and I'm about to do it again. So, uh, like I said earlier, you know, the reason why I do it, it's, it, it, it's motorcycles, man. If you, if you have that drive and that challenge to, to better yourself and that goes for anything in life, like, why not, you know? Why not try to keep leveling up and see what you can do and push yourself to that next level? So that's the story of this thing, and we'll see what I do next, and I guarantee it'll be better than what you see it now today. So, so this last build, you know, I, I grew up racing cars, drag racing. Um, the canyons is what it's set up for now, but when I did the last build, 
I wanted something that I could jump on the bike, rip canyons, drag race people, and do long rides on. So I built kind of a tour pack, which has got bags. I've got the uh, JD Customs bags, fairing. I had the Plex Audio. You know, it was set up for long rides, but as I progressed into racing people, <coughs> you know, I started changing gear ratios and, and doing all that fun stuff so I could be faster off the line. So anymore, you know, it's not made for cross country. It's just, it's just made for ripping. So right now, this is kind of the, the sport edition. I like to rip canyons without the fairing on it, but lately I've been doing longer rides and going to the beach, you know, trying to get out of this heat. So <coughs> I put the fairing back on. Uh, you know, nobody likes that wind beating up against your chest all the time. So, um, it's jacked up too in the front. I've got it maxed out in the rear. I got tired of scraping holes in the pipes. Um, the Kern Canyon's just right here, right around our corner. So we like to get out there and just get, get wild with it. So if you were to classify it, you know, it's just, it's just performance. I mean, the bike is, it's tuned hot. The gear ratios are hot. The engine runs hot. I mean, you name it, this thing is, it wants to go. So for being an old 110 twin cam, she holds her own. <laughs> so the rebuild is gonna be something I wanted to do a long time ago. When that ST came out, you know, this is the original Lowrider S, which you had too as well, right? I got rid of the, the smaller fender and went with the bigger one, just so I could have more artwork on it. Still got the bigger engine. Um, but when that ST came out, I felt like they forgot about the Dynas, you know? And I thought, well, you know what? I need to incorporate that. So I pulled some strings. I got the ST fairing uh, when it first came out. But I sat on it for a while because I was going to get a bagger and I didn't know what I wanted to do. But then um, an unfortunate accident happened at the Hilton. And uh, they pretty much took the whole top of the bike off at, at the Hilton. So. Then I said, you know what? I need to do something and rebuild. Luckily, I was able to salvage this and a couple other things. But I'm um, now I'm going to take the ST fairing, incorporate that into this build. So you'll have the ST fairing here. I've got some stuff up my sleeve for the window. I got some stuff up my sleeve for the headlight, and then some other stuff we're going on here. I'm not going to let all the cat, all the tricks out. And then I'll put the bags back on. So this will be the original Lowrider ST, but the Dyna version. So that's what I got coming up very shortly, probably within the next month or two. Uh, first, first and foremost, I mean, you know, unknown was, those were the guys, you know, those dudes were out there ripping wheelies and some of the sickest bikes and FXRs, you know, like it just blew me away that those guys would put that much time and effort into a beautiful bike and then just go out there and rip that thing, dude. And that, that really got me going. And I was like, God damn, that is insane. So that's, that was the first motivation, but you know, I had been going to born free years prior. Like I've loved choppers. I've loved everything. And <laughs> you know, the Vicla scene is, you know, we're in Southern California. So, so there's a lot of like influence of, of low riders that are also incorporated in this bike, you know? So you've got the murals, the gold leaf, you know, it's not a panel job. I've, I've kind of incorporated everything that I enjoy that I like into a performance build. So the, my biggest influence, was obviously True G with the gold, Unknown, Ryan Cruzy, and then um, Jeff Holt. So if you go into Jeff Holt's history, man, that guy's been doing stuff, you know, since I was that big. So with him just progressing this industry and moving forward with the performance and, and everything that goes along with it, like we were just talking about it a minute ago, like, Back in the day, we'd pull up to a spot and there was no other club style slash performance bikes, you know? And now they're, hell, you can throw a rock and hit one. So that to me, that was huge. And that, I don't think that guy gets credit where credits do a lot. So, you know, he, I've said it a million times and I've, I've been this close to leaving a million times too, but you know, there's just something about that ocean, man. And, and knowing, that's your backyard and knowing every little nook and cranny, you know, like being a diver and knowing all the fishing spots and it's just, it's home. You know what I mean? Like it, a lot of politics, a lot of bullshit that you got to deal with here. But at the end of the day, man, it is a beautiful state. The riding here is awesome. The people here, I mean, every other weekend you can go to a bike show if you want, or you can go do, 
you can do it. There's a million things. Whatever you're into, it's here. So that's the hardest part to leave, and that's that's gonna be hard to let go if I ever do leave. But <laughs> eventually, I don't know. We'll see. I don't want to jinx myself, but yeah, good old California. <laughs> Back in 2014, I got sober. <coughs> I was sober for a good seven years. A lot of that was because of this bike. So I bought the bike. I had to keep myself busy. Idle hands, devil's playground, like I said earlier, you know. I had to keep myself busy in order not to go out and drink, go out and party, just, you know, that lifestyle. And uh, unfortunately, during COVID, I slipped back into that and had a couple year run. And, uh, it was fun, don't get me wrong, but I, I spiraled. I spiraled quick, you know, and got into some trouble. Uh, was looking about 10 years, and I said, man, you know, it's time to make a change, dude. Like, you've done it before, you need to do it again. That's part of being a man and growing up, knowing what your faults are. So I just focused on the bike, man. I just put my heart and soul into this rebuild, and uh, I really got into fitness, started like taking care of myself and my body. So now I've been on that journey, you know, the eight, last 18 months, I'm coming up on, you know, 18 months on the fourth and, um, you know, it's just nothing but gym, nothing but motorcycles, just, just positive things in your life. Just, just trying to make yourself better. Just be a better person in everything you do, work, relationships, all that stuff, man. And a lot of that has to do with fitness. Like I've never put myself first to get healthy before anything else and then now it's just it's night and day I feel so much better life is so much easier just I I can't you know maybe you're partying too much maybe you're not maybe you want to get into fitness all you got to do is just give it a year you know Roji says the same thing all the time give it a year see how you feel and then see if you go back you don't have to quit forever but for me I had to hang it up man that was it and you know it helps my creativity a lot more I can I have more time for doing things and this is one of them <clears throat> dude everything's trial and error you know what i mean I, th I think i touched on that before when i first started doing this it's it's like anything else in life right it takes it takes a few tries to get things right you're not going to be good at it right out of the box like i i didn't know how to weld and then i figured it out right it's like you just keep getting up and keep trying to get better each day so after each build I've progressively gotten better. Like I figured out what works, what doesn't work, you know, what, all I can say is just go out there and do it. And eventually either you're going to catch on or you're going to give up, but don't give up, learn from it. Keep building. It's like, what do they say? Rome wasn't built in a day. You know what I mean? So <laughs> my advice is just, if you have passion for it and you love to do it, you're not going to be great at first. Nobody is but just keep doing it and you eventually will get better and put yourself and put your heart and soul into it. That's, that's the main one. Put your personality, what you're into, whatever you have passion for, incorporate that into, into the things you do. And people will notice that. And that's why it's genuine. And that's why I think this bike has the love that it's gotten. <clears throat> you know, my, <laughs> my plan was to be done before Sturgis, but you know, everything doesn't go to plan. So when you're building bikes, you're going to fall always coming into, you got to have patience, dude. So right now the fairing's about done. The wheels are almost done. Uh, the swing arm, blah, 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 blah. Now I haven't set a date on what show or where I'm going to release it, but I was talking with Taylor over at shifter crew and there's going to be a pretty big event coming up that he's putting on. And a lot of people think I'm shifter crew. I'm not, I'm just his buddy. I'm helping him promote his company, but I'm gonna probably come in swinging for that one. Um, other than that, you know, Laguna Seca, I won't miss that for the world. That's my favorite show on the planet. Uh, Born Free, oh, I'm always at those. Uh, but mainly, man, if you wanna come see it, just hit me up on Instagram. I go riding all the time. You just name the place, we go hit the canyons. <laughs> if you're in Southern California, a lot of people uh, see me down there. I'm down there almost every weekend. It's either at the coast or, or you know, Central California coast. I don't, I don't stay inland very much. Uh, let's see. So let's go through a list of people that have helped me out with this. So uh, advanced coding technologies, that is the gold. Uh, shout out to them. Thank you for helping me out through all the years. GP, GP uh, suspension. These guys 
are killing the game. Uh, Memphis Shades, great company to work with. I broke a window. They had it back to me in the next day. Um, Arlen Ness, man, these guys are also great company to work with. Uh, designed the first Arlen Ness air cleaner at a 90, and now they were forced into production. <laughs> so sorry about that, Kelly. So now the 90 from Arlen Ness, that's that on there. La Para seats, best seats I, I for me. I love a La Para. Um, can't go wrong with those. Uh, progressive suspension. Got nothing bad to say about those guys. Awesome piggyback shocks. Um, Speed Dealer. That guy is making waves. That guy is killing the game. He's actually coming up with uh, new stuff every day. Um, matter of fact, uh, the swing arm I'm going to put on next is, swing, is Speed Dealer. You'll see that here shortly. Pro One. Love to those guys. I'm the elite. Always, uh, always has got a spot in my heart right there. Uh, PM. Those guys are great. Steven, Finish FX, my home boy. If you guys need your bike painted, he's your guy. Um, other than that, man, let's uh, let's go rip. Well, folks, that's all we got for this one. If you enjoyed hearing about Trev's journey with this bike, and if you're interested in seeing the next phase of this build, definitely go follow him on Instagram. I definitely have some upcoming plans of my own that may require his unique skills, so it's probably not going to be the last you see of him within my content. I want to take a moment to once again thank Trev for not only helping steer certain aspects of my own build throughout the years, but for also just taking the time on an oppressively hot day to both ride and hang out. I'm definitely hoping to return the favor the next time he finds himself in my city. Work hard, build custom motorcycles, stay rowdy, and above all, stay true. On that, FXDLS Brooklyn and the Bulletproof Welder are out.